Oh, wow. Well, that eating power is just really blowing in here. I'm telling you, you need to get into this joy that we're experiencing. Oh, this eating power is just, oh, it's just blowing in a mighty way. Oh, so come in, come in, come in, and welcome to this program where we heal every disease and we lift people up to the highest height of joy and we're always praying for more anointing and that's what we need in today's world we need people to pray for more of that anointing to heal you know, because that will keep our churches relevant in this world with all of these different pandemics and so on that are going on. And so let us begin to get into tune with that healing flow all the time. Every day we need to spend time getting into tune, into real tunement and alignment and ability and synchronicity with that flow of that healing power so that that healing power will flow in us and heal us of all our diseases. Oh, it's such a marvelous thing. And Oh, I've been teaching a long time on this healing. And, uh, but today we are teaching on Colossians. We're continuing our touch study uh, right now on that book of Colossians. And we were getting towards the end of chapter 3, getting ready to start uh, chapter 4. And so it is now 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time in the United States of America. Oh, yes. Oh, and uh, we are going to continue on with our study in Colossians. You know, if you heard the program at 1.30, we were studying. We had studied uh, the verses uh, 314 uh, about the uh, uh, word of Christ dwelling in us richly and, and so forth. And, and then uh, 1516, speaking to yourselves uh, with uh, uh, speaking to one another with psalms and hymns and, you know, letting the word of Christ dwell us in us richly. And uh, 314 was the bond of perfection and so on. And so we're going to go on and uh, and where we're at now uh, is number 17 and whatsoever ye do in word or deed do all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god and the father by by him you know it says uh make sure that we keep that name of jesus you know that character that image of what jesus did the, the memory of who jesus was uh, that's what it means by the name of jesus is remembering uh, what his name means and what he did and what he accomplished. Re re remember all the people that he healed. Remember all the, the way that he demonstrated love. Remember his resurrection. All of that is the name of Jesus. And, you know, it's not just the name J-E-S-U-S, -S, but it's all of those things. We are to remember that in every word and deed that we do. Every word should glorify the resurrection, should glorify the fact that Christ died on Calvary to save uh, of the world and, and should glorify his sacrifice and it should glorify his life and should glorify the healing work. And uh, we should attempt to be effective healers to help glorify the, the healing power that he demonstrated and so forth and so on. Uh, do all in the name of Jesus. And, and then it goes on talking about the, uh, you know, husbands and wives and all, and uh, uh, pretty simple, you know, it's uh, not anything to get all upset about, but it says, uh, you know, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it fit in the Lord, and husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them, and really all you have to do to understand that is to go to verse 19 first, and say, husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them, and then go to the places in here where it teaches that husbands are to love their wives, uh, even as Christ loved the church, and we're talking about already, he's already talking about remembering the name of Jesus in everything that you do. Remember the sacrifice that he paid, and remember how he rose from the dead. Left behind the old, you know, he rose from the dead, and left behind the old life, and, uh, or the old, uh, 
left, be left behind the grave, got up out of the grave, and, and when we are resurrected with him, we get out up out of that grave of mortality, move into immortality, leave behind those old ways, and, and so forth and so on. And so as the husbands do that, and as they love their wives as Christ loved the church, then you know, it's nothing. It's nothing to really get upset about, or even even look at. It's just you know a downplay when you come back and say, "Wives, well, submit yourself to your husbands," uh, because uh, all that means really it doesn't really mean uh, something like what people have taken it to mean, like slavery or something like that. It just simply means you know give a respect, you know, a due respect and and a, a due deference uh, to them, and that sometimes there are decisions which they need to make for the good of the family and so on like that. And they do that in the view of the name of Jesus. And they do that as a resurrected individual who is a part of Christ and, and Christ who is their head. And they do that as submitting themselves to Christ. And they do that uh, anything they ask of their wives, it's always in view of, of loving your wives, and uh, even as Christ loved the church. So it's a, it's it's not a, a big deal like people have made it into. It really isn't. And so we just move on, and we just go right on to I just go right on to verse nineteen, and just you know just read about the the you know the, what the husbands are supposed to you know uh, that the husbands are to love their wives and be not bitter against them, and children are to obey their parents in all things. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord, uh, and so uh, you know. Uh, there again, you know. See, uh, all of this is the same thing. You know, when when the husband and the father leads their family the same way Christ led the church and, and, and keeps the name of Jesus in mind all the time and does all these things and, and loves his children the same way, you know, because the children are really the children become part, you know, of the, the wife and, and uh, the, the wife and the children he loves even as Christ loved the church. Well, then all of it comes into proper order and the children don't mind obeying their father. And, uh, you know, in, in, you know, when it really comes down to it, you know, I mean, naturally, you know, they're going to complain sometimes, but, but it's not a matter of where they're going to really get provoked to anger or bitterness or anything like that. And so, uh, it's, uh, uh, fathers provoke not your children to anger lest they be discouraged. You know, you don't want to do stuff that discourages, uh, uh but you want to learn how to motivate, you know in the right way. Uh, servants obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart fearing God. Uh, you know, it, it's, you know, you could take servant in all kinds of different ways, but it can even mean as we are servants unto the church, we are servants unto Christ, and and maybe we're serving the church in a certain kind of a what of a capacity, you know, a custodial or a, or a, 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 a serving as a doorman to the church, or serving as a serving the, uh, as a, an usher or something like that or whatever we're we're doing you know the maintenance of the church uh, as we could that could be called a servant and we do that as unto God not to please man we don't do that to make a name for ourselves or to be seen because we're an usher and we're always there at the door we don't we don't do that to be be a, a to, to become popular or pleasing or or, or or for that sense but we do that as unto the Lord. You know, and the same thing about, well, if you find yourself in a position where, you know, you're serving, a, a, you know, a person that has need of servants and pays their servants and and they have a lot of servants in their, you know, in their, uh, their uh, mansions and all and so forth. And you find yourself in that position, serve it as unto the Lord, you know, and if you're in a country where, you know, that is a, the accepted mode of, of, uh, of life where certain people serve the the, the others, and then you take that as unto the Lord and do it, and you serve it like you're serving the Lord, not to do it to be uh, just uh, getting uh, getting by or get, not just considering, well, I'm going to do just what little I have to do to get by, but you go ahead and do a good job as unto, as if you were actually serving the Lord, and then eventually God will reward you 
for that because you're doing it as unto him. And that's all that means. And so it doesn't mean any kind of, and it certainly doesn't ever mean, uh, it's, it's not the same meaning as what we had as slavery, you know. It's a different thing altogether. Okay, uh, he never intends really to be slavery. Okay, so, uh, 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 okay, according to the flesh, do not, uh, and uh, whatsoever it says ye do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. You see, knowing that of the Lord ye have received the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. You see, and so uh, whatever capacity, whatever, uh, whatever occupation, whatever job, whatever service we're doing, uh, whatever capacity we find ourselves in, uh, position we find ourselves in, uh, we, 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 we are able to uh, build up a reward for ourselves by doing a good job, and we will all receive the inheritance of being a good servant of Christ. We're all, we are all building up, and we're all in that same inheritance. Uh, that Christ has provided, and we're all working to glorify the same Lord, and we're all working to have that love in our hearts and let it, the Word of God dwell in us richly, all in the same way, and as all the masters, as they call it, and all the bosses, and all the all the uh, uh, sub, uh, uh, the uh, super supervisors and so forth uh, 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 have the uh, Christ living in their heart and the word dwelling in them richly. Everything's going to be done in order and it's going to be done with love and it's going to be done with care and it's going to be done to the Lord and it's going to be considering Christ's sacrifice and what he did and all of this is going to come into proper order because everyone is going to just be fulfilling their part and doing it as unto the Lord and that causes everything to work, work out. And uh, so we're breaking everything apart, breaking the unity apart and everything else when we go to quibbling about being in a certain position and maybe we ought to be in another position or we're not willing to do, we're not willing to do for a time a lowly position at all. We, we're tending to break apart the unity that needs to be there. And so we need to learn to take our positions and do them in a loving, loving way as unto the Lord. And so that's all he means by that. And uh, they're, trying to, they're trying to maintain a unity. All right, so... Uh, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. You know, it doesn't matter whether you're the boss or the master or the supervisor or superintendent or whatever you are uh, of whatever position, you know, owner of a business or whatever. It's You're going to be responsible to do that in a godly way and take care of your people in a godly way and uh, and do everything according to uh, considering the sacrifice of Christ and considering the name of Jesus and all of that. And so you do all of that, as it says, the same way, whether you're the servant or the or the uh, master, you do it all. Uh, he doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. You see, he's not going. God's not going to respect you just because you're you know greatly got a lot of wealth, or you are the great boss or you're the great leader or you're the great master uh, you still have the same responsibility as the lowliest person and so that's what he's saying by that and so so you're going to be guilty of wrong if you do wrong no matter what position in in life you're in you know if you're the president of the united states or king of a country or or whatever it is you still have the same responsibility to look and see what you're supposed to be doing to serve God and in a loving way. And so we're going to pray now that every person listening to this will understand the joy and the love of serving God and uh, uh, understand the healing power of God and understanding their place and how they can utilize that for the glory of God. And now we pray that anyone that has cancer, that you will root out all, every vestige of cancer, every root of man of disease. Oh, dear God, just heal cancer, lung disease, uh, kidney disease, uh, diabetes, uh, uh, heal uh, liver disease, uh, heal osteoporosis, give people good strong bones, give them good strong joints, heal all arthritic pain. Oh, heal all the rheumatoid arthritis. Heal everything. Oh, dear God, multiple sclerosis, all types of lupus and every type of, 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 of uh, 
uh, sc uh, scabies uh, that we've heard about now. And, oh, dear God, just, uh, uh, just heal people of shingles and other types of things like that. And now we just pray that you would lead people out of all their addictions to drugs of any kind, cocaine, heroin, oh dear God, any of the old any of the penny bob talk, any of the, any of the barbiturates, and just, just, just completely break the habit of cigarettes and lead people out of nicotine and lead them out of all sense of depression, oppression, or depression. But we ask all these things in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Give us a great joy, Lord.